Okay, so anyway, yeah, because it's, um, I'm very happy to open this uh, very special uh, session of uh, the first internal seminar of uh, Paris School of Economics, and then uh, an entire afternoon, almost, dedicated to this uh, big um, Convention Citoyenne sur le climat. How would you call this? Democratic? Uh... Citizen Convention on Climate. Okay. <laughs> Uh, which will be a mix of uh, presentations by economists and philosophers, I guess. Um, and we'll, we'll, be, um, we'll be handled by Marc Flambe. So, but for, the, for now, um, I give you the floor. I think Benedict is starting or, uh, or Jean-Francois, is it? I will you? start, uh, I will share my screen. You want, yes. You have to. Is it okay? Perfect. Okay, so shall I start? Okay, so this is the uh, uh, first part of, of this uh, workshop uh, will be uh, dedicated to presentation by Benedict and myself, where we will uh, present uh, the uh, Citizens' Convention for Climate in France, uh, and then there will be a panel uh, discussion. So uh, this uh, convention gathered uh, 150 uh, randomly chosen citizens. You can see them here in the Palace uh, of Vienna in Paris. That is uh, the picture during uh, seven uh, weekends uh, starting last October up to uh, June. Uh, um, this is uh, how this uh, convention is presented on the uh, official website. For the first time, a panel representative of the diversity of French citizens will be directly involved in the preparation of the law. Uh, the convention is an unprecedented democratic experiment in France. It aims to give citizens a voice to accelerate the fight against climate change. Its mandate is to define a series of measures that will allow to achieve a reduction of at least 40% in greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 compared to uh, 1990 in a spirit of social justice. Decided on by the President of the Republic, the convention brings together 150 people, all drawn by lot. It represents the diversity of French society these citizens will learn about, debate, and prepare draft laws on all issues relating to ways to combat climate change. The plenary sessions will be streamed on this site. The President of the Republic has committed to submitting these legislative and regulatory proposals without a filter, either to a referendum, to a vote, or in Parliament, or to direct implementation by a government action. So that's the definition. And uh, during this first part, uh, during this talk, after the introduction, I will describe the origins of the convention. Uh, Benedict uh, will uh, describe the complex ar architecture that has been uh, set up to, to, to make, to implement this. Uh, and the um, issue of uh, representativeness of the uh, members of the convention. Then uh, we will describe how the work was organized, okay? how the uh, convention uh, unfolded in time, and the output of the convention, the final report. Then we will have a short focus on the carbon tax issue and on uh, uh, the reception in the French public uh, of the convention. And I will end uh, with a last slide without any conclusion on a research that uh, has been and can be done on, on this convention before leaving the floor to, to, to the panel members. So, um, the origins of the convention, there are three uh, three things are the origin of the convention. First is uh, uh, ideas and the deliberative democracy movement, then the green movement, and then so uh, deliberative democracy. 
Um, the fact is that a group of even randomly selected person is able to get information on and to give ans good answers to questions that are even complex or controversial. This uh, is a very robust fact that has been uh, uh, discovered and then advocated by, by, by uh, academics, including uh, several who are uh, in this uh, with us today, and that has been uh, implemented in society uh, in various circumstances. For instance, the, the uh, uh, Citizen Initiative Reviews in the US, here I'm, I, I quote uh, Oregon and Massachusetts, And um, in uh, Iceland, uh, in Ireland, and in France, this intellectual movement um, is also lively, uh, associated with the names of Jean-Michel Fourniaud, Dominique Bourg, Loïc Blondiot, Marianne Condé, Yves Saint-Omer, Charles Girard, Hello Charles, uh, and among academics. Uh, notice that uh, in the realm of politics, Ségolène Royal have been, has been proposing since uh, 2002 the creation of citizens' jury. Um, in uh, January uh, last year, Emmanuel Macron launched the Grand Débat National, Grand National Debate, which included elements of deliberative uh, democracy. Now, the second pillar, I will not uh, spend time on that, is the green movement. The fact here is that the climate warms. Uh, I will just uh, mention uh, some uh, basic characteristics of France to remember with respect to, to, to that. First, the public awareness of the global warming issue in France is comparable to other European countries. It has developed now, uh, now it's, uh, people are aware of the problem. Now, the question of trust in science itself is comparable uh, in France to, to what it is in other European countries. It is slightly weaker than what it is in Germany and UK. But uh, the main point is that this trust in science, when we try to measure it, becomes much lower or even quite low when the questions, some, in one way or another, relate to government decisions. So. As soon as you pronounce the word government, some uh, trust diminish. That's, uh, that's a basic fact about uh, France. Uh, and the third thing I, I would like to mention is that uh, ecology uh, as a political movement, and, for, and in particular political parties, is, I think it's fair to say that it is less mature in France than uh, in uh, comparable countries, and in particular with respect to Germany. Now, uh, the Yellow Vest movement, the Gilet Jaune, the so-called Gilet Jaune movement is a non-structural protest that uh, uh, 2018 that started by protests against the rise of the carbon tax. The rise of the carbon tax for the Gilet Jaune is the rise in the price of uh, oil, of, of gasoline. So uh, it is linked to car use. Um, important uh, is, is uh, symbolism of roundabouts. So the Gilets Jaunes used to uh, gather uh, uh, on roundabouts, as you can see on one of these pictures, which is a, a symbol uh, of uh, getting together, uh, friendly getting together for protesting, a symbol of uh, uh, rural areas against uh, big cities, and Paris in particular, uh, and of course, a symbol of car users. Um, they have many somehow contradictory claims. Uh, it is an unstructured movement. Uh, lower taxes, direct democracy and control, in particular, citizen initiative referendum. So one of the main uh, and precise um, claim of the Gilets Jaunes was the Greek referendum d'initiative citoyenne, citizen initiative referendum, 
as you can see on this uh, second uh, picture. The first response to, to this movement by the government was uh, Le Grand Débat National, the Grand Debate, where the government invited that many, plenty of local debates would take place, and then the, the outcome of these debates throughout the, the country would be gathered and sent to the government. Uh, it's an interesting issue, but we will not talk today much about the Grand Débat National. The second response to this movement, another response at least to this movement, is precisely the, uh, the convention we're talking about. So the creation uh, of the uh, convention. Uh, it is a decision of the President of the Republic. The idea follows academic knowledge, often carried, as I said, often carried by people who are close to the Green Movement, and activists like the Gilets Citoyens, Démocratie Ouverte, for instance, Malti Dimer and Quentin Sauzé are names to be named here, or prominent media characters like the movie maker Cyril Dion, that uh, is well known in France, or the actress Marion Cotillard, who is even known abroad. Uh, Two co-presidents were chosen, Thierry Pesch and Laurence Toubiana. Thierry Pesch is a director of Terra Nova, a center-left think tank. He had quoted a, a report um, in uh, 2019 that suggested, in response to the Yellow Vest movement, the institution of a form of citizen initiative uh, review backed uh, a former citizen initiative review. The second co-president was uh, Laurence Toubiana. She's an economics by training, uh, strongly engaged for the climate. She led uh, the French delegation at the COP21. Uh, COP I don't know in English how you say COP21. COP okay. Um, Shall I continue, or uh, Benedict, you will uh, go on with the uh, presentation of, of this architecture? Yes. I don't remember what we said. I go on. So, um, I, I put my slides, maybe. Okay, so I can't put, can, can you go, tu, tu peux arrêter ton partage d'écran? Oh, merci. Alors, uh, Okay, so I'm going to quickly present the architecture of uh, the convention. So the members of the convention were surrounded by quite a complex uh, structure. So first, CESAR was the organizer of the convention. So CESAR stands for Conseil Économique, Social et Environnemental, the Economic and Social and Environmental Council, which is the third assembly in France. Um, given that the National Assembly is the lower house and the Senate is the upper house. So this is a constitutional consultative assembly. And uh, importantly, uh, the CCC sessions took place at Palais Vienna, which uh, normally houses CISO. It was a governance committee, committed governance. Uh, which was made of uh, 17 uh, people, so 15 members plus two citizens who were randomly drawn and who changed um, between every session. So uh, among these 15 members, there were the two co-chairs that uh, Jean-François talked about, so Thierry Pesch and Laurence Toubiana, plus one rapporteur, three climate experts, three experts of participative democracy, four experts in the economic and social field, and two experts nominated by the minister for the ecological uh, transition. So the role of this uh, governance committee was to ensure uh, the independence of the convention. So in addition, there were three guarantors, so Cyril Dion, Anne Frago, and Michel Cadi. So each of them were nominated by the president of uh, an assembly, so CESE, National Assembly, or the Senate. And um, their role was to um, ensure independence and um, ensure also good uh, working uh, conditions. Finally, there were a large number and large different types of experts. So first, there were experts per se, so meaning people um, 
who are to share the who are there to share their technical knowledge to provide feedbacks and proposal etc so for instance uh, Valérie Masson Delmont uh, who is a climate scientist was one of them or Benoit Legay uh, who's an economist um, some of these experts were selected by the governance committee uh, especially the experts who intervene in the first and the second session uh, but citizens were invited to suggest names of experts as well so now there is this research question uh, to know exactly who chose uh, the experts. Um, a point that is um, of interest uh, regarding these experts is that uh, so they presented different on different topics to the citizens, but they did not really engage in any contradictory discussion between them. So there was little debate between them. Uh, then, in addition to these experts, there was a support group, Group d'appui, uh, who helped uh, citizens in the long run. Um, their role was to advise citizens regarding uh, the elaboration of the measures. Then there were many fact checkers, uh, some of them uh, coming from uh, IPP. Um, uh, so many of them were young uh, scholars, and uh, their role was to mainly answer clarification questions. Um, a very specific feature of this convention is uh, the presence of a law committee, a committee logistique. So this is related to the fact that uh, Macron announced from the start that uh, the proposal would not be filtered, so which uh, implied that the proposal needed to be legally robust, and hence um, the presence of this uh, law committee was made of uh, two public law experts and uh, the, the role was to transcribe uh, the measures uh, prepared by the citizens. An original feature of the convention is this idea of co-construction of the measures between the citizens and the different uh, experts. Um, another interesting uh, feature is that uh, the frontier between the different roles is not uh, extremely clear. For instance, we saw a co-chair uh, intervening as an expert. We also saw one guarantor giving his opinions uh, to citizens. So um, but there were also facilitators and moderators of the process coming from. Uh, and then there was the last group of people with, were the researchers, observers, and social observers uh, who. Um, um, Yes, they could not interfere with the process. Uh, we had to adhere to a charter um, which said, clearly said that, stated that. Uh, an important uh, type of work we did during the convention was um, that we invited the citizens to fill out surveys at each session. So these were quantitative surveys. Um, so between sessions one and four, uh, we carried out two surveys per session, so one on the first day of the session and another one on the last day of the session, so an entrance and exit survey. Uh, but starting session five, we just carried out one survey per session uh, because the response rate was uh, decreasing a lot. Uh, so the cost of the convention was five, uh, which is one uh, additional euro compared to the planned uh, cost. And for each member, uh, there was a DM of 86. And what is important maybe to say is that this cost, the total cost is much bigger than the cost of the uh, UK uh, climate assembly for instance. Okay. So now I'm going to present uh, the, how the, the sampling uh, was done. So basically, all these citizens were randomly selected uh, by uh, Aris Interactive, and they are supposed to be representative of the French population along six criteria, which are gender, age, education, social professional category, the type uh, going from uh, big conurbations to urban areas, rural areas, sorry, I made a mistake, and uh, also geographically. So um, maybe something that uh, uh, is important is that uh, 
the number of uh, cri criteria which was used is larger than in uh, many polls. Second, we can also see that there, were, there was no ethnicity criterion, and this is related to French law. And finally, um, there was no criterion related to uh, ideas regarding climate change, meaning uh, the citizens uh, were not asked about the concern for climate, and so um, this is obviously a methodological choice, and uh, another choice could have been made, meaning uh, trying to be representative in terms of uh, climate opinions, and this is uh, what was done in the UK, for instance, and so th this choice of not including that uh, criterion could be discussed. Okay, so um, briefly what happened is that uh, um, around 11,000 people uh, were randomly chosen from, um, uh, no sorry, uh, random, first there was a random selection of 96,000 uh, phone numbers approximately. Uh, in this pool, uh, approximately 11,000 people answered, so they answered the phone or they answered the text message. And they said um, the 4,000 approximately said that they were interested in participating. So the main reason for um, not uh, being interested in participating is not being available, meaning not being available at the date of uh, the convention, not having uh, enough time, for instance. Um, then there was a complementary selection of some persons to enhance uh, representativeness, so two persons in a very vulnerable social and economic situation uh, who were recruited by um, an NGO, and then five persons from overseas France. So uh, in total, there were 191 people who were kept in the sample, 150 members plus 41 substitutes. So these substitutes um, um, would replace the members in case uh, of defection. Uh, and so right before session one, one after some defection, 175 members and substitutes were willing to participate. So, citizens, uh, although they are representative in terms of the six sampling criteria, are not representative, uh, maybe not representative for other dimensions. And that's what we wanted to check. Wanted to check whether for other dimensions than the six criteria, these uh, citizens were representative of the French population. So to explore this point, basically, we decided to compare the answers to the survey uh, at the CCC, and mainly the first questionnaire um, in session, with answers provided by the French population in large national surveys carried out by Cevipov, Dress, Adem, et cetera, and also with answers provided by the French population to a survey, an external survey we designed uh, at PSC and uh, that we ran in, uh, for the first wave in April, May 2020 and for the second wave in October, November 2020. So basically, these two waves of this external survey we designed uh, before session seven, uh, meaning before the votes of the measures and then after uh, session seven, after the votes. Uh, obviously, in our external surveys and in our questionnaire at the CCC, we asked on purpose um, the exact question. The drawback of the comparison between all these results is obviously that the CCC survey, the external survey, the general population survey are not carried out at the exact same time, although for the external survey, the dates are pretty close to the dates of the convention. Uh, so we found two common features of the citizens and of the general population. Uh, the first one being that they have the same opinions regarding the Yellow Vest movement, and the second one being that they, uh, they answer to the life satisfaction question in the, in the same way. However, there were a number of differences. The first one um, is relate, relates to confidence. So convention members have more confidence in other people than the general population. Although they have the same level of education, um, the same distribution of the level of education and the same distribution of professional categories, um, 
the, it looks like they personally face significant challenges uh, that the authority of the media don't really see less often than the general population. Uh, regarding the role of schools, they have a different uh, whether uh, which qualities should be encouraged in children, in their opinion. And uh, CCC members more often report that uh, imagination, independence, personal expression are important qualities that should be encouraged in children. And in contrast, they less often report that obedience or attendance at work are important qualities. So they have different values. And this uh, finding is supported by another, the answer to another question, which is thinking about school. With, with which of these two opinions do you agree the most? School should give above all the sense of discipline. School should first and foremost develop critical thinking. And clearly, the group shows that compared to um, the general population that was surveyed by ADEM, um, uh, in the CCC, uh, citizens are way more likely to emphasize critical thinking and less likely to emphasize discipline and effort. Uh, another, on another topic, which is uh, the sense of belonging, we also find uh, pretty important differences. For instance, to the question, which of these places do you personally feel you belong above all? We find that the, the members of the convention have the feeling uh, that they have more often the feeling that they belong to the world and less often the feeling that they belong to the neighborhood or village or city. And the differences are pretty large. And finally, we found also some differences regarding the main issue, which is a uh, opinions on climate change and on related topics. So con compared to the general population, the convention members are more concerned with environmental pro protection. Even, uh, I'm talking about the answers in session one, that they really at the beginning of the, of the convention, before they heard any experts uh, presenting uh, the climate change uh, problems. And second, they are more likely to think that climate disorders, such as heat waves, uh, are due to climate change. Uh, they more often know that uh, climate change is uh, so this um, this uh, distribution of population are we see pretty large differences. For instance, if we compare uh, convention members with uh, our population from uh, the external survey in wave two, there is a twenty point difference in answers regarding um, the importance of human activity in climate change. So, yeah. Uh, then uh, more often they believe that uh, changing our lifestyles uh, will be necessary uh, to address climate change. Um, they more often believe that the consequences of climate change in 50 years they more often believe that France needs to get ahead of other countries in the fight in the fight against climate change. And regarding more precise questions, um, for instance, when we uh, ask them whether they support very precise policies like um, uh, encouraging the use of low polluting or shared vehicles, uh, taxing the polluting transport of goods, etc., we find uh, average or large differences in the responses. But maybe we should also emphasize that. Even in the general population, there is already a large support of many, many policies. But in the convention, it's even, the support is even greater. Okay. And finally, we also found some differences regarding uh, um, topics that are closely related to the process. So, for instance, CCC members likely to have confidence in the ability of randomly selected citizens to deliberate on complex policy issues. And in general, uh, these um, citizens uh, have, um, can be um, considered as uh, quote, deliberative citizens, unquote, uh, meaning uh, they have a taste for debate. Um, they, are, they, are more often, they are more often able to change their mind. Uh, they have a strong sense of public interest and general good. 
and as shown in our answers for a number of questions. So I think uh, this is... Uh, okay, so maybe we can switch screens. Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. So I will now dis describe uh, the work uh, of the convention. So first, how it worked. So there were plenary sessions, often broadcast, and now uh, available uh, on, on their website. Um, during these uh, plenary sessions, um, citizens quite often uh, uh, interrupt uh, the speaker. Uh, but most of the work maybe was done in thematic groups. So there were five groups to which uh, citizens had been assigned by lot, transport, food, consumption, work and production, and housing. Plus another group, uh, the squad, the squad, a cross-cutting group of volunteers, who, who, which was uh, supposed to tackle uh, questions, cross-cutting questions of financing, uh, issues about the constitution, uh, education, and so on. Uh, this uh, squad uh, worked for two uh, weekends, but was at some point disbanded at the request uh, of the citizens themselves. Uh, facilitators worked at the level of the five uh, rooms, uh, not uh, at the level of each table. Uh, when uh, citizens would discuss uh, by tables of five or six, they were alone. This is maybe a surprising aspect of this convention, according to experts in uh, deliberative process. But it turned out that citizens self-organized and tended to moderate or counterbalance each other. Uh, so from our observations, this, uh, this process worked quite well. Uh, then citizens also worked from home uh, by studying the issues by themselves, reading books or more often going uh, uh, online and getting information or via scan on the internet. They attended webina webinars uh, that were uh, uh, that were de designed by by the the, the governments. Uh, the governance of, of the uh, of the convention, especially during the lockdown period, of course, they interacted through a dedicated online platform called Jean Parle, that became an important tool uh, for them uh, for various kind of interactions uh, uh, in, in the spring. Uh, citizens, and that may be also something that is different with respect to other similar uh, processes, citizens were invited to interact with the outside world and even to engage in politics. For instance, they, uh, they were, were not uh, forbidden to talk about the, the convention uh, outside. Uh, they were um, told that they could organize public meetings, and some of them did. They could meet with professionals uh, and with politicians, and many of them did. And they were even encouraged, with some care, to speak to journalists, and, and many did. Um, for the during this convention, there were also uh, on external online contributions. The official website of the convention gave the possibility of open contributions to anyone uh, in three phases uh, from the start until uh, February. Uh, the company Open Source Politics handles this process and produced three reports that were um, uh, handled, handled to, 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 the, to the citizens. The contributions uh, were posted by individuals as well as by organizations of various sort. More than 3,600 uh, uh, contributions were posted. Uh, it turned out that no moderation were, was needed. Some political parties contributed with the same format. 
uh, it's an open research question to evaluate the impact of this part uh, of the process. So uh, the original timeline was uh, planned uh, six weekends uh, between October and the end of January. Uh, but uh, it extended largely. Uh, members expressed their need for additional time and uh, external difficulties appeared. First, uh, strikes uh, in uh, France uh, during the winter. And then, as you know, the uh, COVID uh, crisis and the lockdown uh, in spring. Uh, the final uh, timeline uh, was that uh, there was a planned first sessions in uh, starting in October. Uh, the, in the first session, uh, they were introduced to, to the scientific issues mainly and to the an introduction to how the convention will proceed. Uh, the second uh, weekend, uh, uh, at the end uh, of October, they worked in group, start uh, the, the working group, uh, and, and discuss about the notion of social justice. Uh, in um, November, uh, they keep on working in group. They hear Nicolas Hulot, um, a fa famous, uh, well, everybody knows Nicolas Hulot, I guess. Uh, and they had um, speed dating sessions. That means the occasions to, 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 to meet quickly with many experts of different sorts in face-to-face -face, uh, interaction. Um, uh, the, the fourth weekend in January, uh, Emmanuel Macron visited the uh, convention. They continue to work uh, in their groups and the squad begin uh, its work. In February, uh, they um, continue the, the work in group and, and they uh, begin to tackle um, more global issues about what they will do with respect to changing the constitution, what were the main messages they wanted to, to, to send to, 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 to the people, and the financing, uh, the finance issue. The sixth uh, weekend, uh, each group presented to the other groups uh, the result of their, of their work, uh, and they could uh, draft the plan of the final uh, report. Um, uh, during the lockdown, there were um, various, uh, different kinds of online meetings and, and webinars. Uh, sometimes we call this a six beast session. And uh, the seventh session that took place uh, at the beginning of, of June, they voted on uh, packages of, of measures and they um, voted their final report. Um, to, 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 to explain uh, uh, less factually, the, 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 how the history of, of, this, of this process, let, 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 me, let me give some, some key dates and, and moments of, of this convention. I think that uh, uh, many agree that the first key moment uh, is the talk by uh, Valérie Masson-Delmotte, uh, who is a scientist, uh, specialist uh, about uh, history of climate, that just explain the problem. And these uh, talks uh, was uh, well done. And um, we can see in the interviews that we do now that uh, it, had a, uh, it was very important for, for the, uh, the people to, to, to realize uh, what was happening uh, to this planet, in fact. So this was during the first uh, session. It was very moving, and everyone remembers that. Now, uh, a key, key point also uh, occurred uh, in January when Emmanuel Macron visited the convention. As I told, there is um, a lot of distrust in France uh, with respect to, to, to government. And uh, of course, the, the um, pending issue uh, much discussed uh, at the beginning of the, during the convention, was to what extent can we trust the government that uh, they, they will follow up on, on what we, we would propose. 
And so Macron came uh, and reiterate uh, what um, his statement that uh, he will uh, uh, pass the uh, proposals of the uh, convention without any filter to, to the appropriate level. Of course, not everyone believed him. Many believed him, many be did not. But uh, at least he clarified the things and that g gave a push to, to, to say, okay, let's go on. Uh, I would say that there is a certain moment that is less easy to, to, to pin, pin down, but that occurs um, in February and March. It is uh, the question of um, the economic question. Of course, uh, the question was, uh, do we have to, to, to care about uh, how much it costs? And um, of course, they have to care about how much it costs. Uh, and um, they were waiting for, 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 the, in for the experts, and in particular the economists, what they would say about that. And the good news for the convention that uh, the experts, uh, including uh, Agnès Benassi-Kéré, uh, I don't know if she's here today, but from PSE, an economist, uh, carried a message that was interpreted at least as uh, you can go on, there is money around, okay? So uh, it doesn't mean that they didn't care later about uh, finance issues, but at least there, there were, they, they considered that this was not a, a, a point that would uh, block the, the, the convention and they could go on. Um, in April, uh, more or less, uh, the same kind of good news uh, arrived when uh, the um, due to due to the COVID crisis, the government decided to spend money on an economic recovery uh, plan. So money was available, and at that point, uh, the uh, convention was a very in a very interesting situation because they had almost their. Uh, uh, proposals uh, um, decided, but it was not voted upon officially yet. So um, the question was, would they um, state openly what will be the, the proposal or not? And they decided to uh, inform the president, Macron, of these proposals even before the, the final votes. Uh, this was a political uh, move in order to, 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 to jump on the, on the train of the uh, economic recovery plan and, and, and a political statement saying that do not uh, forget to, 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 to take uh, climate change uh, in consideration when you d decide uh, how to spend the money of this uh, economic plan. Uh, so this was really a political move uh, from the uh, convention that uh, was decided after interesting debates. Now, um, in, in June, another important moment also is of a political nature, is about the, the decision about uh, referendum issues. Uh, fr from the start, uh, it was uh, mentioned that uh, this convention was set with the possibility to propose referendums, referendas or referendums, I don't know how to say that in English. Uh, what they decided finally was that most of their um, proposed measures, they would not ask that they will be uh, implemented through a referendum. They only uh, ask for a referendum, uh, we'll see later, about specific uh, points. Okay. Uh, this was uh, decided after um, debates, also interesting debates of political nature. Is it appropriate for us, for the friends of our, of our messages, to, to ask for a referendum or not? I will not go into the details, maybe we can discuss after, but this is uh, an important moment, I think, in this, uh, in this uh, convention. And um, uh, one more moment in which they take themselves as uh, political actors. 
And the last point was the reception after the, the, the report was released, after the end of the, of the convention, in a sense, reception like the Elysee Palace, where uh, they ask uh, that uh, it doesn't stop here and that uh, they can follow up, uh, follow what will happen to, to, to their proposals. And uh, Emmanuel Macron say yes to, to, to this uh, quest, request. And uh, the uh, convention actually is not finished, in fact, because since uh, that time, they, uh, uh, members of the convention meet uh, with uh, various uh, governmental uh, government actors, and they set up uh, an association, the 150, an association, who tries uh, to do so, to follow on what, uh, what is happening now. Okay. So uh, let me describe the, the, the votes. Um, the votes uh, in, in the seven uh, session, first they voted on not measures one by one, but on, on a set blocks of measures. Uh, there were 150 uh, measures grouped in uh, 44 blocks. Uh, most blocks, in fact, were approved uh, with very high approval rate, something like 80, 90 percent. Yes, against 10 percent, no. Uh, and this uh, is quite understandable because in a, uh, mainly these blocks have been prepared by the various groups. Okay. Uh, they reach some kind of consensus within the group that uh, end up in proposing these blocks to, to, to the, the whole convention. And there were a trust, uh, a lot of trust among these uh, members of this convention. So uh, people from, from uh, the whole convention would trust wha what uh, a given group would propose. Um, some exceptions. The block that includes a lowering of speed limits from uh, uh, to 110 kilometers per hour on motorways had a lower approval rate, 60 percent, but it was voted. And only one was uh, rejected, reducing work time from to 28 hours a week. So that at the end, uh, 149 measures were approved. A second voting phase uh, took place uh, about um, proposals. Uh, sorry, um, the question of introducing, uh, changing the constitution in order to introduce in the constitution uh, biodiversity protections and, and climate uh, conservation. Uh, and uh, the, the question of the legal recognition of uh, ecocide crime. Um, uh, they, uh, so they voted this separately. Uh, the third uh, voting phase was a vote on the publication of the report as a whole. Okay. Uh, and the report was adopted by a very large uh, majority. Uh, what is this report? This report uh, is a long document that contains a two-page introduction that I strongly advise that you uh, read. And by the way, that, the, that introduction could be translated into English and, and published. I think it would be uh, interesting for many people. Um, the list of members of the convention uh, is provided, some with full names, some other uh, with uh, some only with first names. The body of the text is a structured and detailed presentation of the population by theme, by groups of uh, objectives. There are 10 pages on the constitution uh, questions and some political reforms. Uh, 10 pages of synthesis on finance, a one page note on overseas territories, and a one page conclusion. Uh, appendices uh, include proposals that were not adopted, description of the organization, and how the uh, law committee worked. Uh, the proposals are delivered uh, with a variable degree of precision. Many of them go far into the details, down to the so-called logistic writing. So logistic means the, the, the art of science or, or, of writing 
things in the proper uh, um, legal uh, parlance. Uh, they are logistic experts. I'm not. Uh, example uh, of, a, of a detailed proposal to reduce the incentives to car use by a reform of the income tax car allowance system. Uh, this proposal is described in quite many details. It comes with a warning. The work group has not settled between two options, a unique scale that is described in the report and a tax on CO2 emissions. Then the report provides full ready-to-use writing for the legislative sections to be modified, including tables and formulas of car allowances for cars and for the different kinds of motorcycles. So well, this is quite, uh, this is demanding work to, to, to get to that point. And the, the logistic uh, committee was instrumental in allowing the, um, uh, the members of, of the, uh, of the convention to get to, to, to such a point. Um, let me describe, uh, some measures to, to, to give you an idea of the scope and of the variety, uh, of them. Uh, so, many proposals go, are about laws and taxes for, for food quality, to guarantee food quality, uh, which uh, comes with no surprise, uh, because uh, people, these 150 uh, members of the conventions were all people who buy food uh, and, have, uh, and are able to, to discuss all that. But look at the next point. Taxes in the use of nitrogen fertilizers. This is maybe an important point uh, for farmers, but there was very few farmers in, in the convention. Still, they were uh, able to understand that this is an issue to make a proposal and a detailed proposal on uh, this, uh, this question. That is that they propose a tax schedule to, to uh, as an incitation to lower the use of uh, nitrogen fertilizers. Uh, so um, it has been often said, and we will come back to this uh, in, in a few minutes, uh, that uh, the, the main tool uh, of the uh, climate regulation, fighting against climate change, it's the carbon tax. These uh, conventions de, uh, did not uh, propose uh, uh, to increase the carbon tax for some reasons that we will describe later. But they, they propose many taxes which are in spirit very similar to, 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 the, uh, to the carbon tax. Here is one example. Some reforms have to do uh, with uh, administrative structure. For instance, reform the labeling process. Uh, what defines a, la a label, how, which kind of organizations are uh, able to give labels, to give biology, bio labels and things like that. They raise uh, in the report uh, proposals to, 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 uh, to tackle this issue. Some proposals are very wide. For instance, the ecocide crime, okay, it's something that is potentially of very wide applications, and, and you can find uh, that in the report. Some, uh, some points are uh, very important uh, economically. Uh, the one is very often quoted, the compulsory renovation of buildings by landlords. Okay? This is a, a, a very strong uh, reform, in, in particular because uh, the proposition is that it be, it be compulsory, okay? And there is a lot of money uh, involved. Uh, they finally decide on that. I'm not sure they, will, they did it with the required precisions, but uh, still it's, it's one of the main uh, proposition of this convention. Uh, Limiting soil artifici artificialization is an example of uh, um, a proposal that is, in fact, uh, politically uh, very delicate, okay? Uh, and uh, they uh, worked on that. Uh, I'm not sure they also uh, provide a precise enough statement to, to implement this kind of thing, but well, they work on that. Uh, there are things uh, that are very strong proposals. For instance, they for forbid 
uh, the creation of new airports in France or extending uh, existing uh, airports. Some uh, of the proposals are uh, obviously and have been uh, taken as uh, important uh, in the media. Uh, and they know that, they knew that. So a limitation to 110 kilometers on highways was, uh, was one. Uh, creating a carbon score to be advised on, on all products is also one of their main uh, proposals. Well, there are 149 propos such proposals, so uh, that is only a short, uh, a short uh, overview of that. Okay, uh, some comments. Note that some proposals, in fact, are not originally in the convention's remit. For instance, uh, the proposal on ecocide, or uh, issue with uh, specific trade agreements. One proposal, for instance, asks for a, mo a moratorium on the comprehensive economic and trade agreement. This, is, this was not uh, initially within uh, the, the, the scope, I would say, of, of the convention, but they decided that it should be, and so they, they, they uh, took power on that point. Um, some measures, like advertisement bans, will not have a large effect on, a large direct effect on uh, emissions, but represent a change in, in society, and changing the society at uh, an aggregate level is something that was very present throughout the, the, the discussion in the convention. Of course, it's an open question to know uh, will the measures lead to a reduction of France uh, emissions uh, as uh, requested? Also, uh, it's fair to say that uh, these measures, uh, their effect, if uh, implemented, is not always well documented. Of course, it's a difficult uh, thing to do, uh, but uh, on that point, uh, they probably just had not time to, 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 to find the good experts to do that. So it's very uh, broad. It's, it exists, but it's quite, uh, it's not detailed. Okay. Um, filtered and unfiltered uh, measure, measures. So uh, Emmanuel Macron said that there will be no filter. So this implies uh, obviously a duty for citizens to, that is to write uh, legally sound uh, proposals. It's not clear what it uh, implies for uh, Emmanuel Macron himself. Uh, so what happened? Uh, after the last session in June, to last June, uh, the president committed to support 146 measures out of 149. So that were, there were three uh, Trump cards, three Joker. Uh, first, uh, modifying the constitution to place protection of nature above, above all liberties. These proposals, Macron said, no, I, I will not. Uh, I will not do that. Um, the second one is uh, the proposition of a four percent tax on corporate dividends to finance climate action, and the third is reducing speed limits on highway. Uh, since then, these uh, the remaining proposals have gone uh, into the public, have been discussed, uh, and uh, the question is, is there additional uh, trump cards? Uh, what about unraveling of the uh, convention proposals? Uh, and uh, Emmanuel Macron and the government uh, are uh, accused of uh, cherry picking proposals, uh, and, and uh, so the uh, it's fair to say that the proposals of the convention have become in France an important uh, political uh, subject. Uh, maybe uh, uh, yes. Benedict, will you? Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, as you know, the origin of the convention is this uh, yellow vest mo movement, which was a protest against an increase in fuel taxes. And so this is a reason why, uh, as researchers, we were very interested in uh, 
uh, looking at uh, citizen opinions regarding the carbon tax. So in the sessions, um, in some sessions, we asked uh, questions about the carbon tax in our questionnaire. So in session one, we asked a question on approval of the carbon tax without mentioning how tax re revenues would be used. And uh, we found the median approval rate, meaning that 53% of respondents were in favor of uh, such a carbon tax. In session two, we asked some more precise questions since we mentioned the different potential uses of the tax revenues. And so when we did um, when we did it for some for some um, possible uses, the approval rate was uh, much higher. Uh, but at the same time, uh, at the convention, we observed that some citizens uh, in plenary sessions, but also in thematic groups, uh, really clearly said that they were against any um, any carbon tax. And um, in the end, uh, when we interviewed citizens in sessions four and seven, uh, there is a clear disapproval of the carbon tax. And uh, the carbon tax is not even mentioned in the report. So basically, at the beginning of the uh, convention, at least in our questionnaire, we were under the impression that this was some sort of uh, carbon taxes uh, citizens would be interested. But in the end, they were clearly not. And our possible, a possible interpretation of this, uh, uh, of this, uh, of what happened, is that the assembly as a whole wisely avoided this politically touchy issue because uh, they thought, citizens thought that uh, it would put the whole process at risk from the inside, uh, but also uh, for outside. Uh, yeah, so finally, maybe I'm going to talk quickly about uh, French opinions regarding the convention. So in uh, the external uh, survey, we asked respondents uh, about um, whether they heard about the Citizen Convention for Climate. And so we observed a change between uh, the first wave before session seven and the second one. And basically, uh, the second wave uh, shows that approximately 40% of our sample, so of the French population, uh, is aware of, has heard about uh, the convention. So this, this looks pretty, uh, this looks like a pretty, higher share in our opinion. And the rest just heard vaguely about the convention, but when we go into details, in fact, they don't really know what the convention is about. So what we are unsure about is uh, the effect of the convention on uh, citizen opinion, uh, because on the one hand, when we look at uh, this external survey, we see that uh, the approval rate of many policies did not change between our wave one and our wave two, except for one specific measure, which is uh, building renovation. But other than that, uh, there's a you know, very clear stability. But um, on the other hand, we are under the impression that um, the media, et cetera, talk a lot about the convention. And so we would like to, um, to do a bit more research on this effect uh, of the convention on opinions. Okay, so uh, we will not conclude, but uh, uh, we just have one more slide um, about um, research about uh, the, the CCC. So this was uh, an original process from the start. Uh, following an open call, researchers were allowed to follow closely the uh, convention. More or less uh, 30 colleagues finally were and are involved most of them chiefly interested in the process. So we were observers, not interfering. We signed a charter that uh, say so. We could follow and record the sessions, not only the plenary ones, meaning that we were present uh, in the rooms where the discussions took place. Uh, we had the possibility to, to, to pass one or two questionnaires each weekend. And uh, after the end of the convention, so now, we have the possibility to make uh, interviews of the citizens and even of other people, by the way. Uh, this uh, process was uh, open, as I say, 
and I should have also a bit disorganized. It resulted in uh, positive and negative things. Uh, it resulted in several important practical difficulties, okay, uh, because um, a group of uh, academics is not easy to, 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 to self-organize, I would say. Uh, but uh, on the positive side, we have a remarkably diverse uh, set of approaches because people looking at this, uh, working on these conventions, are uh, comes comes from uh, uh, sociology. From, from from they are interested in in uh, deliberation. Some of them are economists. Some of them are geographers. Uh, all kind of people. Uh, and uh, very rich material has been uh, gathered in the form uh, of uh, recordings, uh, interviews, um, questionnaires, and so on and so forth. Uh, so uh, such an event uh, opens many research questions that are ready to be handled, and, and I will conclude on, on that. Thank you. Thank you. Um. I know that uh, maybe we, well, let, let, I think we should take some, uh, maybe uh, 15, at least 15 minutes for a question and answers, if there are any questions. No? I mean, I have a question. <laughs> it relates to the very first thing you said. You said that uh, uh, research, research in economics and philosophy maybe have shown that uh, people, uh, lay people, when they gather together, are able to reach, um, to ask and, and answer uh, questions. They are able to give good answers to questions. And I was wondering how you can, uh, what is your criteria for knowing that the, the answers are right? And so if the objective is to reach the conclusions that researchers or governments think are right, then uh, what is the benefit of this, this kind of convention? Is it just that people are happy to be consulted and this is important? This is going to strengthen democracy, but is it, so is it an informational um, contribution? Or oh, oh, okay, so, so, so I use the, the word good precisely because it doesn't mean, mean much, but, but I, I mean say the background is the knowledge of uh, people who are working on deliberative democracy. And we, we, we have a panel now of people who are these uh, specialists, okay? uh, in fact, more than me, because uh, I learned a lot, but uh, this is not my, my, my starting point. So, so I, I, answering this question, I, I think uh, uh, people who, who, who ask this kind of questions, it's very important. This is uh, the main uh, lesson for, for, from this, uh, this academic knowledge. So, so maybe you will have the, or, the answer to your question after or during the, the panel, I would say. Okay. Does anybody want to ask a question? Uh, if you look at the if you look at the chat, there was a question about whether the distance from Paris influenced the acceptance rate uh, for people to join the convention. Maybe you can quickly answer this question. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know how to answer that question because I don't have the information. Uh, what I know for sure is that um, uh, so Paris Interactive had a hard time find, finding uh, less educated people, meaning that uh, when they call or the text message uh, citizens, um, mainly uh, educated people uh, were interested and less educated people were less interested. So that was a, a big problem. And the other problem was related to um, um, being available, having time. But uh, I have no idea on whether distance mattered or not. So I cannot answer. At the end, at the end, the the the, uh, the constraint was strictly respected. Uh, the, the proportionality to the population of, of various uh, regions, and there was even people from overseas uh, territories, uh, and this raised a specific uh, problem because uh, asking people to come from from Tahiti or, or from the Guadeloupe. Uh, for, for a weekend is too much. So they made a kind of exception. And in fact, people from the overseas territories are, are often people who, in, who work in France, okay, to limit this uh, challenge.
So maybe we can take one more last question for, for There are questions in the chat box. Yeah, right. So so, yeah, so in English, uh, has there been a change in attitudes of the people uh, due to their participation in the convention? Did you ask the same kind of questions as in the beginning? So, yes. So our goal was clearly to um, to evaluate any change in attitudes and opinions um, over time. And this is the reason why we asked the same question in questionnaire number one, questionnaire number four, and to some extent in questionnaire number seven. Let's say, sorry, session number seven. Uh, but our problem is that the response rate in session four is very low. Let's say the response rate in, in session one is good. The response rate in session four is really low, and the session and the response rate in session seven uh, is average. So one limitation to the study of this evolution over time is really this drop in the response rate. So we did some comparison. But we always need to be careful about the interpretations because of this. I would add that that uh, this is about the questionnaire administ uh, of the researchers, but there were also also questionnaire uh, run by 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 the facilitators. Okay, and, and they were chiefly interested in uh, how people evaluate the quality of, of, of the of the debate and how it evolves. No more questions? Uh, so just in order. Do you think that having so many sessions outside the convention left the citizen representatives open to outside interference, lobbyists, people with vested interests? So we are, so we are under the impression, um, so thanks to the, our observation uh, uh, at, the, at Palais Diena, but also uh, thanks to the answers to the questionnaire and thanks to the, um, uh, the qualitative interviews that um, lobbyists uh, did not play any important or significant role at all. So we are, I think that we are convinced of this. Uh, then, um, yeah, so my answer would be, would be a no, uh, at least for what we saw in the questionnaire and in our data. There's a question by uh, Erica Hope. I don't know, you want me to read the question or do you want to ask the question? Okay, I'll read it. Did the citizens find it challenging to reach practical recommendations? How much were they guided on this? Were they given options? Did they find some topics more challenging than others? And why did the citizens want to disband the squad? Okay, I can try to 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 uh, to answer. Did the fa citizens find it challenging to reach particular recommendation? Yes, surely it was really hard work, and uh, uh, they they the point is that they took up this challenge. Okay, uh, this is why they spend much more time than than planned. This is why they they spend so much uh, energy on on that. Uh, now. Um, did w why did the citizens wanted to disband the, the squad? Um, it's not easy to 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 have a definite answer to to that because all this process is is complex and many people are involved, many discussions here and there, and so forth and so forth. Basically, the the the, the idea seemed to be that unlike the other. Um, groups the squad wa was made of volunteers uh, and uh, they had the, the, uh, that this will uh, uh, disrupt uh, the uh, equality among them okay so uh, some are uh, volunteers and some finally tackle the issues of, of finance and the others do not this is somehow unfair so the, the, at least this has played a role in the disbanding of the squad. But it, there is a story to 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 uh, uh, to write about about that and some research to do to be sure. But that's at least one point. Jordan Ray has uh, had um, made a sign, and now I think he he wrote his question. So it's a question about the carbon tax. Why, why so? 
who is intrigued by the decision not to propose a carbon tax. I understand it's due to worries about its potential to make the entire process be perceived as controversial. In the US, though, there is a movement in some quarters behind the carbon tax having potential as a solution with bipartisan support. For example, Climate Leadership Council. Would you expand a little on the fears around proposing a carbon tax? Yeah, yeah, yes, uh, we can expand. Uh, uh, we spent some time uh, trying to, to understand this uh, more precisely. So the point to understand is that the carbon tax is the, the thing that had uh, sent people on the streets uh, a few months before. Uh, that, 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 uh, that's the entry point, okay? Then within the, 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 the convention, this was very much present. First, many people were uh, either gilets jaunes themselves, okay, or were supporting the idea. So, so they had, uh, they were against the carbon tax just as the gilets jaunes were, okay? And then, uh, some some people also feared that the whole convention had been set up in order to uh, to help the government pass something that has been refused by the street. Okay, so the carbon tax was a very touchy political issue. Okay, given that they, uh, my uh, my opinion. Uh, from what I, I have seen, is that uh, they decided to, to, to bypass the problem, okay, uh, uh, so that within, inside, within the convention, there will not be too much opposition that occurs on that point, okay, and with respect to outside, okay, uh, there would not be uh, accused of uh, doing the, the uh, government work, okay. Uh, and that's it. So uh, that's the story, I, I believe, uh, answers this question. Thank you. 